I'm going to be reading the book called Davy's Blue-Eyed Frog by Patricia Harrison Easton. You just get up close. Have you ever seen a frog with blue eyes? Wonder what's going to happen with this one. So sit back. If you're playing with Legos or puzzles or something, just keep on doing it. And that's a good way for your ears to work. Here we go. Davy's Blue-Eyed Frog. I'll show you the pictures as I come to them. Here we go. Chapter one. Davy peered into the muddy water. At the edge of the pond swam tadpoles, hundreds of them. He inched forward with his net, ready to scoop them up. But an odd reflection caught his eyes. Two shining spheres shimmered on the surface of the murky water, like the reflection of two moons. Davy looked up. It seemed to be a normal spring sky, sunny with puffy clouds. No double moon shone down on him. He peered back at the pond, and the reflection was gone. Hey, Bigfoot, watch where you're walking. Davy jumped away from the pond's edge. Who said that? He looked into the marsh grass near his foot. An emerald green frog with bright blue eyes glared back at him. There's the picture. That's right, the frog said. I'm talking to you. Davy bent for a closer look. Didn't your parents teach you it's rude to stare? The frog said. Cool, said Davy. He dove for the frog and caught it as it leaped. Gotcha! Stop staring and give me a kiss, the frog ordered. No way, Davy said. I don't like the idea any better than you do, but if you kiss me, I'll turn back into a princess. Davy thought for a moment. He didn't believe in spells and stuff. Of course, he didn't believe in fr talking frogs either. And then there had been that weird reflection, like an omen of weirdness. Look, I'm in a hurry here, the frog said. Spells like this have a time limit, you know. I have only a few more days to get a kiss or I'm doomed. So let's get this over with, pucker up. No way, I'm not gonna kiss you. I don't kiss girls. I don't care if you are disguised as a frog. Davy stuffed the frog into his bait bucket and shut the lid. He looked toward the other side of the pond for his neighbor, Becky. She was the biggest know-it-all in the whole third grade. Davy grinned. She would croak when she heard that his frog talked. He found her on the other side of the pond. I'll bet I found more tadpoles than you, Becky said. Davy grinned. I found something better than tadpoles. He pulled the frog from his bucket. Becky raised an eyebrow to give him her I know everything look. Davy, a frog is just a grown up tadpole and you only have one. I have at least 12 tadpoles. She looked in her bucket, and I'll take very good care of them too. Remember the last frog you caught? You forgot about it till it died and stank up your room. The frog trembled in Davy's hands. Well, I'll take care of, of, I'll take good care of this one. She talks. Becky put her hands on her hips. I haven't, I haven't heard it say anything. Davy gave the frog a little shake. Speak! Woof, woof, Becky said with a laugh. The frog dangled from Davy's fist. I'm not kidding, Becky. He jiggled the frog. Really, she talks. Becky laughed, sure. And I have a tap dancing turtle. She does too talk, but I'll never let you hear her. Davy dumped the frog back into the bucket and headed for home. If his frog had hit a prince, he'd have talked. Girls are such a pain. Chapter two. Davy marched across the meadow toward home. He passed the dairy cows in their pasture.
Becky caught up with him as he reached the cornfield. Davy kept walking. He turned onto his road. He was thinking about the kind of display tank he'd fix. People would pay good money to see and hear a talking frog. Sooner or later, the frog had to start talking again. After all, she was a girl. Girls couldn't keep their mouths shut for very long. Davy, slow down, Becky said. You were kidding, right? You do know there's no such thing as a talking frog, don't you? She's not just a talking frog. She's a princess who turned into a talking frog. Davy, stop it. I know you don't believe in that. Leave me alone, Davy said, walking faster now. I can't. You're the only kid my age around here besides Jenny, and all Jenny wants to do is watch TV or play dolls. Becky grabbed the handle of his bucket, making him stop. Come on, let me see your frog again. Davy opened the lid. Before he could stop her, Becky reached in and picked up the frog. She looked at it closely. All right, she said. I admit this is a very cute frog. The blue eyes are, are kind of strange, but other than that, it's just a frog. I don't hear it talking. Give me my frog back. Becky took a step back. Speak, she ordered. Woof, woof, the frog said. Now put me down. Becky's hand shook. Her red curls trembled on her forehead. The frog fell back into the bucket. Becky slammed the lid. Her face went as white as that frog's belly. Davy held the bucket tight against his chest. I told you so. How did you do that? Becky asked. Do what? Make it sound like the frog talked. She does talk. Stop fooling me. You made it sound like the frog was talking. You learned how to throw your voice like a ventriloquist. Show me how you did it, please. I didn't do anything. Davy pulled the frog out of the bucket. I'm telling you, this frog talks. I'm getting tired of this, the frog said. I order you to kiss me now. That was really good, Davy, Becky said. It was the frog. Davy Brewer, if that frog can talk, I can fly, Becky said. Start flapping your wings, the frog said, giggling. I heard you laugh, Davy, Becky said. You've got to teach me how to throw my voice like that. Davy stuffed his frog back into the bucket. He stomped toward his house. He didn't even look back at Becky. He didn't care what she thought. His frog would amaze the guys at school. He looked toward his house, one of several houses scattered at the edge of the cornfield. No one on this road had ever seen anything like his talking frog. They would know about her soon enough. First, he'd show the guys at school, and then the whole town. He'd become famous. Soon the whole state would hear about Davy and his talking frog. Maybe the whole country. Becky could laugh all she wanted. For once, Davy knew something that she didn't. Frogs could talk. You just had to find the right one. And that is all that I can read today from Davy's Blue-Eyed Frog. I'm gonna return this to the library and so you can check it out. Somebody doesn't beat you to it and read and find out what happens to Davy and his blue-eyed magical frog. Thank you for coming again to Story Starters for Younger Children, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.